We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K., live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Is the sun out? <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be a nice, nice day. In and out, sunshine. That's fine with me. We're in the 60s. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, hey, all right. So my team wants me to, they thought, you know what? Why don't you start adding a little bit of your thoughts? You know, since you're in PR, Stephen, and you've been in the industry for over 30 years. You know, yeah, I've been told that, People kind of, not kind of, like we've been getting feedback that people want to know my opinion. And I'm like, really? Like you want to, want to know my opinion about what's happening in the news and things? And I'm like, I don't want to follow the the trend of what other people are tar- talking about. Had a little bit of a tongue twist there. Uh, you know, I mean, I can, I don't mind doing that. Uh, I just don't. You know, I leave that up to the late night shows and other people of of what they're sharing. Also, to be quite honest, I can have a very, very raw, objective and subjective viewpoint on things. And as I grow more popular and more famous, (laughs) I, I have no desire to plant seeds that can turn around and fuck me in the ass and really, really, you know, then have a great career and then someone go back a couple months or a couple years and be like, you said this and we're going to put you on blast because, you know, we want something to talk about and uh, we feel like a victim right now and we don't appreciate what you said. But yet, you know, I don't even know how to wipe my own asshole. Well, shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, really, I, I, I you know. I mean, what really? I mean, I, I think for the most part, we've here's the thing. We've got actor James Pratt on today. He's newsworthy. Everyone I have on my show is newsworthy. Everyone. They wouldn't be on my show if they weren't a great person that have great topics, a great personality. They don't have to have a fucking storyline. I don't care about that. What I care about is is to do what I love to do and to build relationships. And these are people like today, we've got James Pratt, that I'm building relationships or I already have. I've known James for several years. And now finally, after several years, he is finally on my show. And it's been worth the wait. Uh, He and I had a conversation before we went live and James was sharing with me how things are like going a bit slow and to share uh, my clients are going through that I'm experiencing that it's like what's going on with the process why is why is it taking two months when it should be done in like 48 hours literally whatever God the universe the angels whatever is meant to happen I am trusting the timing it annoys me a little bit about you know 2023 has been a great year. I feel like I've done six months going on seven worth of work within a month and I'm loving it. Uh, Other than that, you know, if you feel that something is not too fast in one area of your life and you're looking for speed, you're looking for consistency, you're looking for something that doesn't feel so mundane because sometimes a lack of movement or no movement can feel mundane. Go run, go jog, go take a walk, get on your computer, send out an email, write an article, do something and make your own speed work for you. And honestly, as an emotional mental health technique, that's what I do. When I'm feeling frustrated, annoyed, that things outside of my body and embodiment and in this world 
that is not going at the speed that I appreciate, I create my own opportunities to the speed that I want it to be. And I feel really, really great emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. I feel great when I take power in my own hands to do what I want to do at the speed that I want to do it. Because honestly, when another human being or somebody else is involved, you've got to go, you've got to play with the teamwork role and figure out how you're going to be on this journey together. It's just, um, it's just reality. It's just part of being human. So that's my emotional mental health suggestion. Do something for yourself that gives and fuels and enlightens and enhances the self empowerment for you to live the life the way that you want to. We've got, I'm going to bring this up to date. Uh, we've got music artist, Justin Love. We're doing a live music drop Valentine's day. I'm excited. You're going to hear it first, first and only on Valentine's day, Justin's new song, no friends. And we're going to be playing and, that live here, 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, 8 to 9, 9 to 10. I still have to do that. I still count my fingers sometimes. Let, you would think after all these years I would have it down pat, but no, when you like traveling back and forth and going in different timelines, you, it's good to just check in and make sure you're, you're getting the time right um, because I have messed up when I haven't checked in. So 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern to, for all my uh, you know East Coast, New Jersey, New York family. Uh, Justin Love, live, and uh, No Friends is going to be the track that we're going to be playing exclusively here on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We've also been getting questions about Catherine Swain. When's Catherine getting her butt back in the U.S.? People been wanting a new show. Well, she's got a producer, director from Netflix. Um, he's got other award-winning projects that's coming up um, and already finished working on. She's putting that together. I think she's coming back next week. She's in Barcelona or somewhere right now. But just to let everyone know, Catherine is coming back and she's got an all-star lineup of, of guests and people that she's interviewing. Uh, Resilient You with Alicia Pizzoni. Uh, she didn't have a new show for today, but that's okay. Uh, just check the schedule. Head on over to power985.com. Or you can uh, check us out on your iOS or Android app. Download it, Power 98.5. The schedule's there. We actually added it in another section. So when you're over on Power 98.5, you can either click the live music. The schedule is there. Or you can click the tab and then where it says talk shows, you can go ahead and check the schedule there for all upcoming shows. Uh, Pre-recorded. And, you know, just like the lives that I do, we do re-air those uh, sometime later on during a week or the following week. And that information's always there. I know that I'm working on getting a DJ to perform live on Power 98.5, getting that in the works to get a, you know, summer's coming up. I definitely want to have weekend DJ segments. So I'm working on that. My dear friend, I'm excited about this. Gina Pekka from Netflix Pressure Cooker Season 1. She's going to be on February 15th. That's a Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Have any questions, comments, you want to share the love, or even put, you know, tell us to, you know, you want to shout out, you know, uh, any of the guests on my show, whether you're on the website or the app, just go ahead and click the messenger on the bottom right-hand corner and send us and share with us your love. It's a quick and easiest way. And how many other radio stations do that where you get direct access? You don't need to worry about calling in. Just send us a message. And uh, it's quick. It's immediate. We don't have to, you know, waste time. It's boom, 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 boom. And we will share that information. And if you would like to be a guest on any one of our shows, you can email us at power98.5radio at gmail.com or contact at power985.com. I will say a couple things that I find a little somewhat interesting and I don't, I'm going through right now. And to be honest, I find a lot of the content that's 
you know, I call fluff media on, you know, the news here. It's like, why? I think people just want to talk just to fucking talk. Um, I don't, you know, I'm just going to honestly say, I don't find anything really interesting here to really share or to add in my point of view, um, except I find this slightly amusing. Amusing, and I don't mean that in a condescending way. I just think what I really appreciate, and I'm being very specific, I like the headline. So, Harrison Ford. I, ra I was raised Democrat, and my moral purpose was being a Democrat with the big D. Now, you can take that however you want it. I'm going to read that one more time. This headline, I appreciate. Harrison Ford, I was raised Democrat, and my moral purpose was being a Democrat with the big D. Now, is he really saying Democrat? Or is he saying something else? You know, is he referring to the male genitalia? I have no idea. Either way, I just looked at the headline. I'm not even going to bother reading the article because the headline says enough. Sometimes you just read the headline. But when it comes to my show, it's worth listening to the whole thing because you never know what golden gems are going to come up, what's going to happen, what we're going to talk about. And... There's a lot we cover in such a short amount of period of time. I will say here, I enjoyed that Pamela Anderson documentary on Netflix. I encourage people to watch that. I don't care whether you like Pamela Anderson or not. Netflix has been doing a good job with their bio docus or docu series, whatever you want to call it. This was really done well. And I'm surprised her son said that she only gets $4,000 in royalties for the, um, the Baywatch. I'm shocked. I would never thought that she just gets a $4,000. I think that's a, he said, for the year check. That amazes me. Uh, I don't, th yeah. Now, something else here interesting. It's just gibble garble. Gibble garble. And I'm not going to be going in a lot of the other stuff. You know, I believe you got to be careful what you put in your mind. And I, I don't get into a lot of this. You know, I'm proud of my show. I'm proud of what I do. I'm proud of the information I, I, I offer to people. You know, it's genuine. It's real news. Someone said that I reminded them of, and I, I, I'm going to have to ask, um, you know, James. But that really awesome guy, he... he uh, he passed away. He was always on the stage. And and that's how I like my interviews to be. I like them to inside actor studio, I believe it was. Thank you. I believe that's what it was called. I appreciate that. Like you really get down to the heart to know why you love this person, why you should love this person. Uh, what inspires you about this person? Why do you follow them and enjoy watching their films and shows? You know, that's the real investment is to and is to really educate yourself to know why you're putting time into watching a film, why you're putting in time into watching a, a television show series. What is it about it that moves you and inspires you and really brings you to a place of a sense of fulfillment, whatever it may be? You know, just like with James Pratt, you know, that we have on today. He's an actor, director, and a three-time Australian auctioneer of the year winner. And James has got a really incredible following. And with this show, we're going to find out more of why James is so incredible. But we're going to find it because the people that I have on are not out there creating smoke and mirrors. They want the real investment. They want to invest in you to build really, really good quality relationships. And the artist, you know, values that, and so do the fans. I don't, sometimes I don't even like to call, they're not, they're family. I think sometimes to call someone a fan um, is just a, 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 a marketing advertising word. It's family, um, you know, 
even if somebody is an acquaintance, when they're spending money on a ticket to see you, when they're downloading, paying money to download a music, when they are, you know, investing in you, that's that's more than a fan. Uh, he is a recipient of various, James Pratt, now I'm talking about, he is a recipient of various international awards, including winning Australia's top five under 35, Best Actor at the American International Film Festival, Best Actor at the Beyond Hollywood International Film Festival, and winner of Best Director at the 2022 Keynes Film Awards. James' career in film started when he made a short film for $200 in remote Outback Australia that went on to be a finalist in the NBC Universal Short Fest. Since then, he has gone to work on Oscar-nominated feature films and leading television series. His latest film, Malibu Crutch, Crush, let me start that over again, <laughs> his latest film, Malibu Crush, in which James plays the lead role of Michael Chase, premiered at the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood over September and has scored over 26 festival wins. Do you see what I'm talking about? You know, just like inside the actor's studio, this James is a person. He is a brilliant talent. He's, a, he's winning awards. And he's winning awards because he's earned those awards not paying for these awards. Even when someone is investing and they are, you know, an executive producer, they're putting money into their projects, they're doing it. And I'm going to say for James, I believe James does what he does because he has a bigger and better reason to do it. And he's not there specifically to garner narcissistic rewards. He's there doing it and creating jobs, and you've got to respect that. Anyone that is putting their reputation on the line, or even if they're not putting their reputation on the line to create jobs, you've got to respect that. James, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. Stephen, it's, uh, it's great to be speaking with you, and, and I like what you said. It's been a, a little bit of time in the making. Uh, I think it's, I mean, we were joking, but it's like over four years this has kind of taken. So no uh, no pressure for myself to be a great guest. <laughs> not, not at all. What's, uh, you know, just reading this and, and sharing with the audience what's going on with you. And that's to take $200 and to win and be a finalist at NBC Universal Short Fest. What is the real to to come directly from you? Why are why are you doing this? Why are you an actor? Why are you a director? Why are you a three time Australian auctioneer of the year winner? Why are you all of these things? You know, Stephen, I think I think with the the acting side of things, I mean, I really love what I'm doing. I think that's sort of the the key to it. When you enjoy doing something that you like. Uh, dare I say you love doing something, then your your results are a lot better than if you're just simply doing it for the money or for fame or whatever the one thing is that, that might be driving you. Uh, so I think that would probably be the, the key. But I mean, the other side of it too is I think what I'm most passionate about with the, the filmmaking is is just telling stories, you know, something that's pure as that rather than well, I want to be an actor, but I only want to be an actor if I'm the cool guy or, you know, I want to be famous, but I don't want to go to acting school, but I want to be an actor. Like it's, it's pretty simple. It's, you know, I just love telling stories and, and I love what I do. You sit on numerous advisory film boards, including the SP Film Awards in New York, Mogul Productions in Los Angeles, and the I Hollywood Film Festival in Los Angeles. What is the climate like of where the film industry is now? What do we have to look forward to for 2023 and even beyond 2023, knowing that there's been a reset? I think there's a real opportunity for people to take hold of their careers. I, I loved what you said, by the way, of, of earlier on in the show where you were talking about, you know, if, if things are not happening, then go out there and, and make something happen. And I, 
I do think that maybe some of the content maybe isn't as strong as, as what it's been in previous years, but the difference is now with all the, you know, the streaming services, the availability of cameras, the cost, you can actually start making your own content rather than waiting for someone else to make it. And I think that's really exciting. Like once upon a time, if you made a film, if it was a studio film, it would be shown at a theater. But if you made it yourself, then the best you could hope for is straight to DVD. Whereas now it's, you know, you can make a a really quality film for a, a pretty reasonable budget and you can sell it straight to Netflix and they'll promote it for you. And I, I think that, gives people a lot more life to be creative than perhaps 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when it was it was a little bit more you just stay in your lane uh, type of business model. What's the best thing, honestly, that you've learned in this industry? Because you, before you answer, we've known each other for several years. We're finally in this in this place in space, which is absolutely perfect because it just feels so good. Once again, timing is everything. Uh, you know, sometimes the weight is worth it. Uh, and, you know, to, to be in that alignment from when we first met to where you're at today, I'm going to say a lot has evolved in your life personally and professionally. What I'm most concerned now is who is James Pratt now after the last several years? What, what is it about you that I, I may not know who you are and what you've learned in life? You know, that's a really layered question and, and great question, by the way, Stephen. I, I think it would have been, what, four, four or five years ago when, when we could have done this interview. We could have done this interview four or five years ago and then everything, you know, COVID came. I was back in Australia for a year and a half. Uh, you know, like you said, the alignment is, is different. I, I think probably the, the main change I've had uh, is, is just more of an appreciation to enjoy the ride. I mean, when something like COVID happens, it means that you're technically, you can't, like people that are used to controlling what's around them, suddenly can't control what's around them. It's a great learning curve. And I think for me, it was a time to just, I, can, I went back to Australia uh, from LA. The world kind of went upside down. And it was a nice time to kind of just reset. And I, I shot that movie you mentioned, Malibu Crush, during COVID as a way, again, just to remind myself, you know, I, I just love making movies. And, and if this film is a comedy relief when it comes out, I'll be really happy with that. Um, thankfully, it's, it's gone on to, to be really successful with U.S. and Australian distribution. But that in itself is, is I think, a good reflection of maybe where my mindset went. Uh, after COVID, which is, I just want to make a film, something that makes people laugh. Uh, exactly like you said with the headlines, there's already enough negativity out there at the moment. Whereas maybe five years ago, I was probably, you know, a little bit inside my my head a bit, like as in like it's work, 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 uh, and didn't get that chance to kind of stop, get a third perspective back in Australia, come back. And and just to sort of clarify, the the, the year and a half in Australia, that was the interesting thing when you talk about you know, you can only control what you can control. So Australians were told to go back home, like just before COVID sort of hit that lockdown, like, you know, they were canceling international flights. So for me, it was like, hey, you know, the, the Australian government and, and a lot of my buddies who are Australian in LA, the same thing. It's like we, we kind of scrambled just to get a flight back to Australia, thinking, well, we'll probably be there for like two months. And then they didn't actually open borders again for, for about 18 months. And it was just, a very, very surreal time. I've, uh, I'm checking back in with some of the points, uh, bullet points that I have here from, you know, previous articles you've done. And I, I like to, to research and to know what was shared before, you know, where was your life before this interview? I like to do that with people to see how much, You've evolved and grown and and just become so seasoned. One of the things I've noticed that is not talked about too often or asked, um, you had said in one of your uh, past interviews, I'd spent most of my time growing up doing surfing competitions and playing sports. To be honest, if you never put that on record, I would have never (laughs) thought or assumed to know that you 
you, I'm going to say, even if you're not surfing or to ask, are you still surfing? I will always consider you a surfer now that you're mentioning this, whether you're doing it or not. But how has someone that's gone from surfing competitions and playing sports to then studying at the National Interest Institute of Dramatic Arts in Sydney? Well, you know what? I'll, I'll let you know a little bit of a cheat code here. Like where I grew up in Sydney, uh, in Australia, in, in Sydney, Australia, it's called the Northern Beaches. There was not a lot to do but surf. Uh, so in that kind of like, you know, school, it was all about surfing and I guess, you know, adults, something that comes way in the future. It just didn't really seem like it was on the radar. But how it kind of turned quickly is it sort of, I, I, 17, graduating from high school, and it's like, well, if you want to be a professional surfer, then, like, it's a pretty big jump. Like, you've got to go on the qualifying tour, and I actually had a, a friend of mine that I grew up with. He became a fully-fledged on the world tour surfer, and the lifestyle is just, it's, in, it's insane. Not that I was ever even going to get on the world tour, but uh, the sort of jump from being a kid that enjoys surfing, maybe doing some surfing competitions and then becoming a, a professional is just, it's huge. Um, so for me, it was very much like, okay, so finishing high school and now it's kind of like time to be an adult. And, and I did remember my parents at the time, they kind of gave me that talk where it's like, well, you have to now start being a bit more serious with your life because before that, yeah, it was playing sport having, uh, having fun with my, my friends, uh, you know, surfing kind of like one of those like vacation movies that you see where they go to like, you know, a beach house for the summer. I, I'd say that's probably like the first 16 years of my life kind of was like that. And then, and then came the point where you kind of have to grow up post high school. Films such as Dumb and Dumber, Heat, Point Break, Star Wars, and American Pie these Hollywood productions all had a big impact on me growing up. With you making a reference to that, I'm going to honestly say the original Dumb and Dumber, I get it, Point Break, love it, Patrick Swayze, Star Wars, and American Pie. It reminds me of something to where if if I were to hang out with you, James, does that mean with this potential you know, Dumb and Dumber and American Pie, these, these moods and feelings, are we going to have... Uh, like a Las Vegas hangover type of night filled with action and in suspense, like it's uh, a Star Wars film. And then when the cops come and wondering, okay, who busted up the hotel and made all this mess, <laughs> we're going to say, well, no, we were point breaking out there in the waves out in the, uh, out in the Pacific ocean or Atlantic ocean or whatever. That's, that's we could, yeah. I mean, we could, we could definitely use that alibi. Uh, you know, we were, we were just surfing off Malibu Pier the whole day. Yeah, that couldn't go. have been, definitely could have been us. Yeah. So by, by the way, that's great research, Stephen. I, uh, you've really done some great research. Like I, I th these are kind of like the, the interviews that you're mentioning that I've done. These are kind of like, kind of just, I guess you could say pinging in my brain going, oh, it kind of sounds familiar. I think I did. I think I did that one. I think I said that. Yeah. I was going to say you've done really well. Now you see why I made a reference in the beginning of the show. I watch what I say because people, there are, there's going to be at least one person that's going to do their due diligence and they will dig and dig and dig to find everything that could stand out. So, yeah. I, I, I'll tell you a funny story on that quickly if you want to hear it, but I, I did a, a podcast interview once and it was quite funny because, you know, when you, when we're talking about hosts not doing research, so this guy didn't really know me and he was overseas and he did all this research, but unfortunately he did research for Chris Pratt, not James Pratt. So he kind of started the interview and then he started asking me these questions and it was like, it was like, I was like, I, I didn't know whether to say like, Hey, um, I think you got like the wrong person or I, I don't really think this is kind of like makes any sense. But then he picked up on it. He's like, Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we could do another interview then. But it was just that difference between a, a host that kind of does the research and a host that kind of, you know, quickly does like a quick Wikipedia search and just says, okay, great. Let's start the interview. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, I prefer, and it just goes with just being who I am. Uh, have you know? Be you know? I've been in PR for over thirty years. 
I like to make sure that if there's going to be a boo-boo in facts, I will take ownership of that, which I, I'm very meticulous, extremely, extremely meticulous uh, when it comes to accuracy. You have to be. To be a PR rep, you have to be accurate to the precise precision uh, and detail to everything. Uh, there is a science to do what I do. And with that being said, when leaving it up to somebody else, and whether it's the press secretary to the White House, if they don't do their research and they leave it up to assistants or myself as a PR rep, and those boo-boos happen, it doesn't cost the reputation um, you know, of the assistant or um, uh, it could also may or may not cost the reputation of an executive producer or producer. Ultimately, it's the face. It's like it's me or it's the journalist or it's the host. And if if we don't do our due diligence to care, I'm going to speak for myself and also the way representation or journalism should be or and, and everything, James, when someone is not doing their due diligence to care about you, to even follow up with the research that was given to them, that is not the assistant's fault. That is not the producer's fault. That is the, the journalist's fault. That's the representative's fault for not giving a shit to care as to who yeah. they are interviewing. Yeah, no, I, 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 I did find it funny when the guy was telling me, when he asked me off the cuff, hey, so what's Arnold Schwarzenegger allowed to hang out with? And you're you're kind of like, yeah, I'm 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 not the guy who married Arnold Schwarzenegger's daughter, <laughs> but but you know, I could I could I I'm, I could I could say he seems like he'd have a, a a good he'd be a good guy to hang out with, you know? yeah. but yeah, so, but I uh, you've done your research, Stephen. I think that's very very clear, and it's uh, it's great questions so far. Thank you. It all starts with the great script. A well-written script will set you up for a good film. I think editors are very underrated as well. In today's film industry and with the technology available, a good editor can cover bad acting and completely change the tone of the film. I know of films that have missed out on being sold, but then a new editor does a recut and a film gets sold to a big studio. That's what you had uh, given as an answer as to what do you think are the most important elements of a good film? Do you still stand by that? And, and where's the direction now of, of how you feel about what makes, you know, the, what are the important elements of a good film? Yeah, I, I can't stress enough how much an editor kind of makes a difference. And, and I know it's kind of like an ever-changing kind of landscape because, what, for example, an editor could do five years ago versus what they could do now. It, it keeps getting more and more. But I've, I've, I've seen firsthand films where the first cut, they've gone in there, it hasn't sold. And these are studio films where the studios, you know, either picked up the, the option on it after it's been recut. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, there's films out there that the first editor's done a cut on it hasn't tested well, looks like it's just going to be, you know, left on the cutting room floor or, or kind of like a straight to, to VOD kind of release. And then another editor's come in and they've tweaked it. And then all of a sudden it's, it's up for all these awards and it's, it's like a top rating film. And, and the point I'm making with that is, I mean, the, the filmmaker out there that's kind of stressing about things and sometimes the actor as well, you got to remember that the editor is your friend and one of the best pieces of advice I ever got at acting school, which is not meant to be this advice. I, w I went to this school called NIDA and alumni, you know, Kate Blanchard and Mel Gibson. And, uh, you know, the list is, is quite honorable. And through the time there, a lot of the time they're like, Oh, you know, you, you have to be really good to be in TV and you have to always be learning your lines and always hit your marks. And, really stressing. And one day I had this teacher and he came in and he'd worked with Spielberg. Uh, and he said, listen, guys, when you do a studio film, you kind of have to be good to get it. Like you can't just kind of turn up and, you know, hope for the best. 
But he said that there's going to be days where they're rushed themselves. They they don't have enough time to let you do four or five takes to get in the motion, or they they need to do 25 different shots on the on the one scene, and you're going to get you know quick coverage. But he said they make you look so good. You know, if if for example the scene is you have to cry and you you just can't do it on on set, guess what? They'll the editor will cut to the other person in there and they'll put you know some emotive music on top and then they'll cut to a different angle. And they can work around it. And the the point there I'm I'm making is that if you're a filmmaker or if you're you know wondering like you know how much emphasis does the editor have? It's the editor is the one there that makes you look good, cleans up the problem, and is is the one that you should really invest in building a relationship with because what they can do is just phenomenal. It's it's that phenomenal right now. Speaking of editor, what projects do you have coming up and? What should we expect or look forward to with the expertise that you just shared? Uh, what do you have going on to help us with more of what we can be enveloped when it comes to mood and technique and feeling and the complete atmosphere of a James Pratt project? Well, I think if anyone watched Malibu Crush, they, they would kind of see that the bar's pretty low as far as uh, deep conversations. Malibu Crush was basically dumb and dumb. I come to Australia. Uh, so that the, the emotional intelligence of the main characters, it's a fun ride, uh, as a comedy, the, the projects I've got coming up, uh, there's, there's a really exciting one, which is a little bit of a left turn from, from dumb and dumber. It's, it's like a very moody, emotive thriller set in Lake Los Angeles, which if you know the landscape, it's, it's a little bit like Vegas. It's sort of salt flats, uh, you know, that very much desert um, end of Breaking Bad season two type of look, uh, which is, I, it's a passion project for me. Uh, and we're sort of inches away from being able to kind of like announce it with a studio, which, which is what we were talking about earlier, which is, you know, things are, things are a little bit slow this year because you get verbal yeses and then Sundance comes up and, you know, this person has got to sign the contracts at Sundance and this person's at Mammoth, you know, this week, so they can't sign the contract. So it's, it's, uh, it's a project coming up, which is really exciting. It's a, it's a thriller. Uh, I, I just shot a, a TV pilot. We'll see how that goes. And, uh, and I have another film that I was behind the, behind the camera on, which I keep a lookout for, which I've done a bit of associate producing for, which is called The Forest Hills, which is uh, Shelley Duvall. It's a it's a thriller horror um, as well. So there's a, a few things sort of in, I guess you could say, in that thriller, moody uh, sort of landscape. Mm. I'm looking forward to attending all your red carpet premieres and also any projects that you're working on. You know I want to get back in front of the camera. I think you should, Stephen. I, I think you should. I, I have a question for you. Um, you know, let's say tomorrow some, someone comes to you and says, Stephen, you could do anything you want. Uh, what, what genre do you pick, TV or film? I, oh. All right, you ask, I really... What, what? Putting you on the spot here as well. No, I, I like it and I appreciate it. <laughs> So here's the thing, my, and, and, and I'm processing because I don't get asked questions too often. My sure. first thought would be film because I believe that you've got more time to be able to process and to articulate and to be able to expand and express oneself. Why I'm going to pick television is I like the opportunity that if I were to have a shorter amount of period of time to learn my lines, get it right, maybe slightly improv or any type of method acting or whatever that may be asked or needed or, or thought of, I work better being spontaneous and to work much quicker. And television is more my style in that way than right. than a film to where we're sitting there all day and what doesn't make any sense to me is we're going to do a scene why is it taking 12 hours to do 
a scene that's going to be shot in a couple minutes or whatever, and then we need to wait more hours. So I'm going to say I prefer television because I like the speed of, of television productions. I do prefer film because I feel that there's more refinement in film. With television, if I can be on a supporting actor through different television, which was I was told, you know, if I could get supporting actor roles, I can be on different television series. But whether even if it's a main role, I like the idea of being able to continue longevity to help build and strengthen a project through TV than the idea of what I feel that you can't do with film. Because when someone starts doing part one or part two and part three, like, you know, with the Nightmare in Elm Streets and Texas Chainsaw Massacres and stuff, and then when people start remaking films, it becomes very convoluted. So I believe that the integrity right. of, a, of a television show works better now than the self-gratifying, let's remake a film or do a film and then there not being enough time to put the marketing and advertising and promotion behind it because that's where the film industry is at. There's a lackluster in the care of post production. Yeah, or they use up they use up all the money in in shooting the film and and let's just say getting the cut out there and then there's there's no money to to publicize it. Um, and that's yeah, that's something people forget, especially with indie films. You know, your your marketing is so important to to kind of get it out there. Sometimes the worst films, just the reason why you always see them is just because they had a great marketing budget. Uh, and, and you know that film for being bad, but you still watched it and, and they still get money out of it. So I totally agree. I, I was watching Breaking Bad, the, uh, again, season one and two. That's probably why I referenced the, the Lake Los Angeles. But the, the, t the way they shot that, like, I mean, that in itself is almost like a, a movie uh, the way they shot it, it just, you know, visually it's stunning. It's, it's got a high budget and it kind of, it, it dives deep into a story. It's not just like an on the surface old dialogue TV show. Mm -hmm. So very impressed with them. Well, I hope I answered, answered your question. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, uh, I hope in, in, in a couple of years we can, we can sit here and we can talk about the, uh, the TV series that you're in. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. Last question. And I, I really appreciate this one. What are your first thoughts when looking back over this past 12 months? Where do you, where are you at now to propose that question? And before you answer, you had stated originally rewarding, challenging, and a lot of self growth. Is it still the same or has it changed? It, it actually feels very much like the same, but it, it feels like last year, like let's say we talk about the 12 months last year, it, it feels like a, a long time ago. Like, you know, this year started and it seems like that, you know, that shit or that port we've sailed like away from further than, you know, even though we're still not that far off from last year. So I'd say the same thing. I want to thank you, James, for being with us today. It's a true honor. I'm looking forward to being and working on, or even as a PR rep on any future projects you're working on. All great things, James Pratt. I believe your Instagram, Twitter are James underscore Pratt 7. Your LinkedIn is James Pratt, and your YouTube is James Pratt Official. Correct? That's it. Right. And, and Stephen, thanks very much. I mean, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, but uh, I really appreciate the questions and also just the research as well. You're welcome. Yeah, this is a this is a brand new brand new experience for you with me. Yeah, I hope to do it again. Oh, most definitely. Any closing thoughts? Awesome. You know, I just uh, I like I said, I, I really enjoyed the interview and um, I, I everything you said before the show as well. I think the uh, you know kind of just make your own run your own race make your own uh, make your own momentum if, if it's getting a little bit slow out there and uh and hopefully we can see you on a, on a tv show i hope so i know big brother is cast uh they're they're doing their cast again and uh this is for uh big brother season 25 i'm actually uh either today or tomorrow i'm going to uh shave do a facial and i'm going to 
create my introduction uh, audition tape. And this is going to be my 18th time submitting to be on Big Brother. I hope I can get in. We'll see what happens this year um, and how I feel about this. Every year, all the years beforehand, I was always absolutely clean shaved. I had a fresh haircut beforehand. I perfectly planned out what my backdrop would be and do it. This year, I'm not doing none of that. This year, I'm just, um, you know, just trimming down the facial hair to be as close to my face as possible. I'm not getting a haircut. I'm keeping my hair long the way it is. I actually like it. I've got more of my curls when I grow my hair out long. And I'm just going in all natural, absolutely all natural when I submit this video. I have no expectation. I would love to be on this show. Um, the the casting uh, directors know. And I already, I reached out to them again saying, hey, I auditioned 17 times for this. I'm going to be submitting another one. Uh, so that's what I well, plan I'm hoping, on doing. I'm hoping to see, I'm hoping to see you on there because I mean, I'm not a, I, I won't lie to you. I haven't watched a lot of it. But usually when I have seen part of it, I'm like, why did they pick this person or that person? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I, obviously they've, they've got something in mind for the, the personality clashes. But yeah, I think you'd be a breath of fresh air um, possibly the smartest person. I would say definitely the smartest person on the show uh, as well, Stephen. So let's hopefully you can get on there. I'm going to tell you this and mark my words. I don't know if people have ever made this reference before. I know it's been said, uh, you know, that casting directors and producers and things like that, people, or even like if you're asked, like a lot of times it is stated um, oh, I would be the best person on the show or, you know, there would, and I, and I'm not, and I agree with you. You're absolutely, you hit the box of nails, James, through the board with one hammer swing. Uh, it's usually referenced or I've been told, you know, when someone's auditioning, when they ask why you should win or why you should be on this show, you said it and I didn't even say anything. Television has never had anyone like me before on there. Not only for what I do, but anyone with my set skills. Okay, it's it's almost like a Liam Neeson in the in the film Taken. I do have a certain set skills. Nobody in this world has in the combination and in the way that I have them for who I am and what I do, and with my personality. Uh, it has been said to never say. Um, I would, you know, someone should not be saying, oh, I would be great for TV or, you know, I make for great television or anything else like that. I'm going to honestly say Big Brother would never had anyone like me. And I'm going to close by saying that Big Brother puts me on. And depending on the psycho psychological makeup of the other castmates, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know how they have Star of the Bachelor or other people? Um, I will take the crown as the number one Big Brother cast member in history. They will say Stephen Cuoco, Big Brother cast member made history, season 25. Hand over the crown if anyone else thinks that they have it. And I am, and that is saying that confidently. Because I don't bullshit. I don't put on air. I know how to be a team player. But also at the same time, I understand the psychological psychological components of what this game is about. And I would not be going in making concern of friends. I understand that now it's $750,000 on the table. I'm going in to win just like if it's the game of Clue. And it will be fucking exceptional. And something no one has ever seen in the last 24 seasons of Big Brother. Well, I no, no pressure on them, Stephen. But, <clears throat> you know, if, if you get on there, I'll be watching. I, I don't usually watch it. But if you get cast on there, I'm definitely watching. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, who would you like to give a shout out to, James? Uh, you know, you've put me on the spot there. Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to do a shout out because 
I was actually thinking about her this morning, Jessica Ross. She has no idea. I haven't spoken to her in probably like three weeks, but she was actually one of the people at I Talk New York that was supposed to be there, like yourself, uh, that uh, at the last minute couldn't come. Um, but I was thinking about her. She's a really, really great friend of mine. I've known her a long time. Um, but yeah, she was just on my mind. Someone that, you know, when you think of someone, you're like, I should check in, see how they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I have a reason to check in and see how she's doing. I'll tell her I gave her a shout out. Yeah, please do. Uh, thank you again, James, for being on the show. I appreciate you and, and thank you for all the years of friendship. And we've got a lot more we're building on and, and connecting with. And don't hesitate to reach out anytime and keeping me posted on all great things that's happening in your life. And uh, you're more than welcome to be on, on my show and, and on Power 98.5 anytime. Thank you very much, Stephen. And uh, I really appreciate the kind words back at you. Thank you. All great things, James Pratt. Head on over to his Instagram and Twitter, James underscore Pratt 7. That's J A M E S underscore P R A T T, the number seven. His LinkedIn is James Pratt. And then his YouTube is James Pratt Official. We are going to have this available today on all platforms, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, and Spotify. For those that are just joining us and don't want to wait for the re-air, uh, I will be having those available for you, and you can share that. And, you know, James, if you need the link from any of those podcast channels, please go ahead and utilize those, add those to your press kit. Remember, this is a radio show and not a podcast. We... Uh, we, we join and I have my show on those podcast channels for the best interest of my guest on the show so they can easily be found and heard. Like I said, if you're not able to tune into the live or when we re-air these lives on Power 98.5, don't hesitate to check out Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. We've got my good friend, music artist, Justin Love from my home state of New Jersey. February 14th, Valentine's Day, live music drop of his new song titled No Friends. Then we've got Gina Pekka from Netflix Season 1 Pressure Cooker, February 15th. That's on a Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 11 to 12, 12 to 2, <laughs> 2 p.m. Eastern. I kind of, I just, it's a habit. I enjoy it. 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, always check Power 98.5 for all things. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco, Catherine and Company, and Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. New music and more. We are a commercial-free radio station. And we're always um, adding new music almost every week. Uh, I break the traditional radio station uh, stigma. Do not play the same music for three, six months on end. We are refreshing the station With the millions of music artists, there's no reason why new music cannot be added. And every week to every other week, we are adding at least 10 to 50 new tracks to the station. Once again, all great things, Power 98.5 Satellite Radio, power985.com. Download the app, tune in on Alexa. And remember, we stream live on Streamitter, Streama, MyTuner, which is one of the most popular that my stations also listen on, Uh, live FM radio and more, 200 countries. And yeah, it's that exciting. Can we go ahead and check the message just in case if there's a shout out at all? Just in case. Uh, Claudia, thank you. Claudia from New Hampshire, she's giving a shout out. Thank you, Claudia, for the love and support. Have a great weekend, everyone. Uh, Valentine's Day is just a couple days away. Before you try to love someone else, remember to love yourself first. Because you cannot even try to love someone else when you don't completely know how to love yourself. I hope that helps. I just, that came to my mind to share from a closing thought or with the closing thought. Have a great weekend and much love.
Friend us on your socials and let's connect.